What's up, Kansas City? I'm your host, Glenn Bryan Frizzell. Today we are filming in the historic Lincoln Building right here in the 18th and Vine District. Today's special guest, everyone loves the theater. Mm -hmm. Today we turn to a special theater institution in Kansas City, the Kansas City Metropolitan. We have its artistic director, Ms. Karen Paisley, and Jitney cast member, Mr. Theodore Priest Hughes. Welcome to What's Up Kansas City. We're glad Thank you could make it. Thanks for having us. We're delighted to be here. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell us a little bit about Jitney? We understand it's an August Wilson play. Um, I don't know which cycle it's in, but it's set in the 70s, Pittsburgh. This is correct? the 1970s play. Mm -hmm. now, if, and I imagine most of your viewers are pretty familiar with August Wilson's work, but just to kind of catch everybody up, he wrote a 10 play cycle about the, you know, the 20th century the African-American experience. And so each of the plays kind of moves through a decade. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Jitney is his 1970s play. Right, mm -hmm. right. And Set then, in the cab station. Right. And we have the main character who is the boss. And then we have, mm -hmm. you're playing, is it Dub? Dub. Dub. Yeah, Dub. I'm the main character's best friend. Basically, right. I've been with them the longest at the Jitney station. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Long as at the Jitney station, uh, Mr. Hughes, a Korean War veteran, uh, how do you connect to this particular character? How do I connect? That was an easy one. I was just telling Karen, my father, my grandfather was a Korean War veteran, father Vietnam veteran. Plus, during that time, I was alive. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that pretty much really connected me with the experience in terms of being around these type of people. And I've also actually been a cab driver before. Really? So, yes. <laughs> Where did you drive the, your cab? Out here, right here in Kansas City, Yellow Cab. Wow, that's serious. You know, serious business. So, yeah, there's a whole lot of connections to that era, that time, and then people who've been through these type of experiences. Now, Ms. Paisley, have you directed August Wilson play before? Mm -hmm. Several times. Several times? Yes. Jitney? Uh, this is my first production of Jitney. Okay. I directed Fences a couple of times, I've done piano lessons. We did piano lessons a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Priest was a part of that, too. Um, but this is my first production of Jitney. I mean, we are probably, I guess, the, the only professional theater in Kansas City right now doing August Wilson's work Definitely. regularly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is, I think, a real shame because the work is really exciting and the plays are marvelous. And they have great roles for actors and it's really fun for audiences. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm not sad that we're the ones doing it. No, right? Because no, I think no, that's right. pretty terrific. No. Um, but I wish that more people were a part of that whole experience. And I, mm -hmm. hope that, I hope that this conversation will help people find us so they'll find a play. Sure, sure. And as director and as uh, actor, what were some of the challenges that you found when approaching this particular piece? Challenges when approaching this so We were just kind of talking about that. The only challenge that I really have that I really don't like is just the not knowing part. That's really about the only challenge. For the most part, I mean, I've worked with Karen, we, what, about 10 years now? Yeah, a long time. You know, it's, being an artist, we always say something always goes wrong, but you always figure out a way to make it happen, make it work. Mm -hmm. So that's just like part of the thing. So it's not as much a challenge, but the biggest challenge is really just becoming comfortable with the piece so then we can portray it as it's meant to be portrayed. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that really makes me uncomfortable. Other than that, everything else is comes with the territory, comes with the art. Does mm -hmm. Mr. Wilson leave a lot of room for character interpretation, um, approaching it from an actor's perspective? That, not That's knowing. a good question. That, that, that is a good question. Yeah, well, I believe all plays Ten years do a leave a lot of mm -hmm. room for you to interpret where the character is. What I do like about August Wilson is he captures the language of the era mm -hmm. very well. And those are one of the things why I was talking about that unknowing. Because we have to unlearn how we talk mm -hmm. to speak how it's written in the script. Mm -hmm. That becomes uncomfortable. But other than that, I love the way he does that, you know. But as far as leaving room to really discover the character, there's a lot of space. He gives you basic things, the ideas, just like an outline of who the character is. He leaves a lot of space for you to really fill in the blank and develop who this person is to a deeper uh, level. Would you agree with that? Uh I would, but I would also say that I think he does an extraordinary job um, laying a really clear path for what the character wants, to, desires, etc. Yes. I think you know, half of directing a play is casting. Mm -hmm. that if you cast it right, it's going to go well. Mm -hmm. um, and part of what made this project interesting to do was finding the right people. And I always think of like casting actors is like I'm trying on shoes. 
Mm-hmm. But you want to find the right shoes. The shoes need to fit. Wow, that's because a, if you're walking around in shoes job. that are uncomfortable, mm-hmm. it's not a lot of fun. No, no. And I've so, had those on. yeah, having the right pair of shoes on your feet. So it isn't so much an idea of are you talented enough to do this. Although talent obviously is a big criterion when you're casting a play, talent, ability, um, skill, or training. Um, but it's really about that inherent piece of you mm-hmm. that is right for this play. And I think in this particular cast, we have a bunch of really, really wonderful <coughs> people who are gifted at what they do. And when you hear their voices, I think you'll be really surprised at how beautifully it comes together. That they feel like, uh, so far in rehearsal, it's really felt like everybody is exactly where they should be. Mm-hmm. It's ex- really exciting. And I guess as a director, it's like uh, when you have a basketball team and everybody is so good at the position they're playing. Mm-hmm. And it's a real dream because nobody's trying to be the guard when they're really the, the center. You know, they're doing what they should do, but everybody kind of leans in and picks up. It's really beautiful to watch. Wow, nerves are still, not a nervous bone in your body yet. <laughs> well, we're not there yet. <laughs> Always room for progress. That's right. the artistic director speaking mm-hmm. there. Um, I, I did kind of want to talk a little bit about the plot without giving away too much of the play. Mm-hmm. I know August Wilson always develops wonderful ensemble pieces. Mm-hmm. Right. Characters are very rich. Phil, not Philadelphia, excuse me, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania history, uh, that community there. We're sitting in the 70s, and I know the role that you play as is Duke, in my Duh. Best, Duh mm-hmm. a friend to Becker, who is the owner of the Gypsy Cab Station. Uh, and, and this friendship kind of, uh, I guess, undergoes a different dynamic uh, during the second act of the play, where you find out uh, a little bit about what's going to happen to the business. Mm-hmm. Um, can you speak on that as a metaphor to what's happening in our communities today? Mm-hmm. The erosion of our values, the erosion of uh, just when we tear something down, we, we really don't think about what's going to happen or we're going to rebuild that particular institution. Mm-hmm. One of the things I see in that is because um, that being Dub, who is closest to Becker, who's the lead character, in this time of indecision, I help to push him. Mm-hmm. And I think even in times if we're dealing with our society, there are times where our leaders are indecisive. Sometimes our leaders are not as uh, aggressive or maybe proactive as they should be. And they do need to be pushed by their subordinates or the constituents. You know, and that's what I really see in the relationship between what August Wilson's talking about there and what's going on in life. And being prepared for changes. I mean, you know, we look for the blue collar jobs or the blue collar stock. but Tomorrow's not guaranteed. So, you know, you have to be prepared. Like, I was actually lucky in part of my scenes. I, I kind of had some things set up. So when if, if the transition goes a certain way, I'm kind of prepared to deal with that. But as I think as he's also saying, life has changes. Be prepared for those changes. And be prepared to support those around you, whether it be the one who's the guide or the one who's the push from the backside. Because we need both sides mm-hmm. working to what it is we're trying to achieve. Our corporations taking over our gypsy, well this is back in the 70s, but our mom and pop institutions, mm-hmm. are, are we still in danger of that today? That rich cultural heritage? All slices of the, the I think community. it depends. You know, it's been real interesting. I moved here 12 years ago. And when I first moved here, you know, driving down to this area mm-hmm. um, was a different experience. And it was very interesting today coming into this building that I had never been in this building. And, it, and in a way, this building is sort of a metaphor for this play. The Lincoln Building. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That um, what was happening in Pittsburgh in 1977, of course, nationally, a big recession. You know, for those of us who were you know, children at that time, we remember our parents being really stressed out, gas prices right. going through the roof, everybody freaking out about that, and fear. And Fear is both paralyzing and motivating. Mm-hmm. And of course, the city's response to the play is we're going to tear this place down, we're going to rebuild it. They've been planning that for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then the men of the station have to de- determine what are they going to do in response. Mm-hmm. Are they going to cave in and move, or are they going to dig in and fight City Hall and say, you're not going to tear this down, but here is a value. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the things I value <coughs> about Kansas City, at least the Kansas City that I know as a relatively recent import, is that I believe that it has come to value a lot of its older neighborhoods and begin to develop and protect them. Uh, but I would tell you, this, this building's a jewel. You walk in here from the street, I mean, this is astonishing what's in here. 
But I would lay odds that 99% of the people of Kansas City have no idea. Mm -hmm. And that there ought to be a way for them to see this mm -hmm. you know, and know more about it. Uh, and I think that's part of our lack of bridge still mm -hmm. and understanding what's where and where are the treasures in our city. Um, Very wise statement. We're missing a lot. Um, not because we want to, simply because we haven't had the opportunity to intersect yet. Like you and I never met before today. Mm -hmm. Yet, how long have you been in town? Quite a while. Yeah. This meeting was and, quite fortunate. Yeah, so our paths mm -hmm. just haven't had the opportunity to cross yet. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe now they have, something cool will happen. Yes, yes. Always the artistic director. Thank mm -hmm. you for that, Ms. Paisley. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, what messages do you hope to convey with Jitney? And then we're going to talk a little bit about Casey and Matt. Mm -hmm. We're all human. Mm -hmm. That's really the bad. To me, that's the underlying story. When you have, well, this is an African American play, but if you take any play of any race mm -hmm. or any culture, when you get down, we all have more in common than we have different. Mm -hmm. You know, and to me, that's really what it shows. You'll see the same struggles that any other working class group of people of any race, of any background, mm -hmm. in any country would have. You know, there's no difference. I think that's the biggest thing to show, you know, to show the equality between all of us, you know, that mm -hmm. we're just as, everybody's a people. Well, and we haven't talked about the you know, relationship between Becker, who's the Jitney owner, and his son, Booster. Right. Um, Booster is getting out of prison after 20 years. August Wilson always has those complex father-son Right. And Booster it's a Becker. really, really intense experience. And I guess as a parent, Watching that relationship on stage is so painful because there are times as a parent that we don't get it right, mm -hmm. that sometimes we really blow it, blow it. Mm -hmm. and, and it's very sad to me mm -hmm. to see that. Yet we see Becker redeemed because he's got the opportunity to help another young man who's not a member of his family, and he does help this young man, but he's so angry at his own <coughs> son that he can't reach out and, and find a way to... to mend that experience. Fascinating. Now, Ms. Hughes, what other products do you have going on? Oh, let me see. Well, most of my projects coming up right now are teaching projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With the school district or with the... Um, uh, well, I work with Kansas City Young Audience and the Missouri Arts Council. Also working with the Writer's Place. Matter of fact, Poetry Out Loud, I'll be emceeing that this weekend mm -hmm. at the Writer's Place. Uh, there's another couple of writers workshops going to the writers place. A couple of things I have going on at uh, Avila College. Mm -hmm. We'll be doing. They're having their Upward Bound program. We usually work mm -hmm. with the Upward Bound program. They have an Upward Bound conference coming up in April, so we'll be doing a couple of workshops and doing some performance with them. Well, let me see. Where else? We're about to do a week residency out in Martin City. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's pretty much where I'm staying busy with the acting and performing right now. <laughs> Awesome. And Ms. Paisley, mm -hmm. uh, any future projects for you and oh, what's yeah. going on in case <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> there's all the plenty right. that we've got. Um, let's see, this Jitney's on stage, and mm -hmm. then we do the last night of Ballyhoo, and then we close with Full Monty, and this is the time of year we're putting together next season. So this is our 10th Jitney, anniversary. Yeah. Ballyhoo, and Full, Full Monty. Monty. That's, yeah, that's so we do six shows, six main stage talk. shows a year, and then usually another five or six outreach projects mm -hmm. every year. Because mm -hmm. um, we met working. What did we do first? First thing I did with you was Lamp and Moth. It was the reading hand, yeah. uh, script in hand. Then we did the Langston Hughes. Right, thing. we created a project with right. Langston Hughes and Simple Stories. At Casey Matt. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And in partnership with the library. Jesse B. Simple, okay. Yeah. yeah. You, you're very well read, dude. Oh, yeah, I gotta do something <laughs> in college. I gotta do something in college, man. Yeah, yeah. waiting for the uh, Western Union check to come. Um, how, how can people actually go see um, Jitney? Um, get tickets. Um, March 5th through March 22nd, mm -hmm. we run. Um, our website is metkc.org. The phone number is 816-569-3226. Um, That's mm -hmm. the box office. So you can email, call, you can go online and book tickets. Um, when we did piano lesson, it sold out. So yeah. I would As really encourage people yes. to book early. Don't wait till that last weekend. Um, one of the most exciting moments, I think, was on the last day of piano lesson. People were piling into the room. We put them everywhere we could. Mm -hmm. But there were still people left outside that couldn't get in. And that's a real shame. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a great experience to see this play. We have great actors in it. Um, I, think it, it I hope it won't be a once-in-a-lifetime in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. But I think it's certainly a once-in-a-lifetime right now. 
Tell us that date again and uh, um, number. March 5th through March 22nd we run. Tickets are on sale now. Um, the phone number is 816-569-3226 and the website is metkc.org. We'd like to thank the uh, Metropolitan Kansas City Theater Ensemble for lending you guys here today. Oh, I'm glad to be here. And uh, we appreciate uh, the, the knowledge, uh, the wealth that you're adding to the theater community. Please come back sometime and share with us. We'd love to. We'd love to. Thank you. What's up, Kansas City? Uh, the address where you can get more information about uh, Jitney is met.kc.org. Uh, please uh, make the effort to attend uh, this once in a lifetime theater experience. My name is Glenn Bryan Frizzell. Check out more video online at www.whatsupkansascity.net. And remember, the sky's the limit. Aim high. Shoot for the moon. If you miss, at the very least, you would have landed among the stars. I'm IFBB Bikini Pro Cat Williams, and when I'm not working out in the gym, I'm searching the web on Cascade Media and What's Up Kansas City. So make sure you check them out.